Okay, welcome guys. This is uh, this is our session number seven, right? And I really hope you are doing great. Are you ready for today's session, guys? Angie, how are you doing? You ready? More or less? So so, can you listen to me? Melissa, Marvel, Reina, Jeffer, Genaro. Yes. Hi. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're going to start. And today we have a topic which uh, we are going to really take from yesterday, but we have a new topic as well. Okay, we left an activity pending, right? And we talked about ED and ING adjectives on the previous right? I would like to know before we start if you have questions. Okay, either about the ED or ING form or any specific um, question, you know, on the platform. I think there is a question, right? Angie, do you have a question? I think you have yes. one, right? Yes, but I, know, I don't remember what exercise was. Okay, let's see. I think you texted me, right? Let me see. Yes. Oh, I think it says uh, about movies. Okay, let's see. If you can help me to find uh, exercise, that would be great. Let's see, let me try to locate um, this. Okay, and what about the other ones? Guys, are you okay with the platform or do you have any specific question where you want to go over? It's about the um, wait, 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 wait. Three ten. Three ten. Okay. Let me access to the platform and then I'll see what's going on there. Okay. And so three ten. Let's see three ten. Okay. Oh, this is about relative closes, right? Okay. Yes. And today we're going to start talking about that. Okay. But it's nice that you are asking, like, uh, anticipating this. Mm -hmm. And which specific one that you have questions? Let's see. Uh, the first one says, give me a second, please. I'm still accessing it. Okay. Are you on your phone or on your computer, Angie? Uh, computer. Computer, is it possible you can share it with me and with the class so we can check this? <laughs> I know what is that mi the mistake. Oh, you know what the mistake is? Ah. Yes. <laughs> What's the mistake? Share with us. Um, I forgot how I pronounce punto. Period. Period. Oh, Today you didn't. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's totally fine. Remember that um, sometimes when we just missed, well, it can be just one single character, but if it's not there, yeah. it will be taken as, <laughs> as incorrect. Yes. So the period. Thank the you. End. All right. Thank you for asking. Anybody else that might have any question or doubt, or are we fine? Okay, shall we start with today's class, guys? Okay, let's see. All right, so today we have this activity we left pending yesterday. And this is about ED and ING adjectives. Guys, what is the difference based on yesterday um, class or maybe based on your own understanding? What is the difference between ED and ING endings on adjectives, anybody? Raise your hand and tell us, please. Hmm. No problem, Melissa. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I, I feel you, okay? Just try to relax, listen to the class, you know, let it be. All right, so let's listen to Angie. Angie, tell us. ED is about um, a temporary, a temporary feeling. And ING, it's about uh, permanent, something permanent about something. 
Hmm, let, let me ask Marvel. Marvel, do you agree with uh, Angie? Marvel? Jeffrey, do you agree? Reina, Genaro, Jenny, do you guys agree with Angie? Daniel, Evelyn? In my case, I agree with Angie, but I think that it's not the best definition of temporary with ED because if I think that you can change uh, in this time, but in the past you can change. Is this is in my in my mind? I think so. Uh -huh. In the past, you you can you can change in the past, but but actually, yes, you can change it. So you're talking about ed ah about ing then. So it's not permanent. Is that that's your point? Yes, teacher. Ah, uh, okay. I think yeah, I I get that point. Because if I say uh, we all change, right, as human beings, so I cannot say I am boring, and that's gonna be for a lifetime. I can change. <laughs> okay, that's a, that's another perspective, and I hadn't seen it that way, being honest, Jeffrey. But yeah, but then when we say when we use ing, like Angie said, it's because that's the way something is, right? That we're just describing it right but then and this ing will cause any effect or will affect you know um what's around that's why if something is annoying i don't know it can be just a noise uh you might get annoyed by this you know uh situation so that's why ing basically it describes you know how something is and then ed is is something temporary that's why we said it we said it this way. Now, um, let's focus on what we have on the screen. I know you already have it ready. I, I know you did that. So let's um, volunteer and read this text. And then you tell me how you have it. Who wants to start reading it? Okay, Gustavo, thank you so much. Okay, so let me open my, my transcription. Okay, I had a terrible time at the movies. First, my ticket cost $10. I was really shocked by the price. By mistake, I gave I gave the cashier a five dollar bill instead of a ten. I was a little embarrassed. Then there was trash all over the theater. The mess was disgusting. The people behind me talk dur during the movie which was annoyed. The story was hard to follow. I always find thrillers too confusing. I like, I like the special effect. So they were amazing. I don't know if, if, if I, I am correct. Hmm. Okay, it's interesting. Based on what I heard, I, I would like to have, um, I would like you to repeat when you said the people behind me talked during the movie, which was? Which was annoyed. Annoyed with ED, annoyed. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Uh, thank you so much for, for that. We're going to talk about this like uh, when uh, we have other opinions. There's one little change that I want to make on this. Gustavo, but as 
I would say maybe little detail that we need to go over. But as of now, I want to listen to another opinion. Let's see who wants to go next. Try, please. If you did this. I want to try. Jeffrey, do you do it? Marvel, yes, did you? Sir. Okay, can you try or? Jenny or Marvel, Emma. Uh, uh -huh. I will do it, teacher. All right. I had a terrible time at the movies. First, my ticket cost ten dollars. Uh, I had. Sorry. Uh, my ticket cost ten dollars. I was really shocked by the price. By mistake, I gave the cashier a $5 bill instead of a 10. I was a little, uh, teacher, how do you pronounce embarrassed? Embarrassed. 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 Mm -hmm. Then there was trash all over the Twitter. The mess was disgusting. The people behind me talked during the movie, which was annoying. The story was hard to follow. I always find thrillers too confusing. I liked the special effects. Doubt they were amazing. Okay, so in this case, I can hear similar answers, just that in this case, I think Jeffrey, right? Change here. He said I I N G instead of E D. So that's the only change. And then the other one, Gustavo's one was exactly this is the only change I hear. Um, so who is right here and was a mistake? First, I want to go over some stuff here, guys. Uh, some pronunciation. This is instead of. Instead of. Instead. We do not say, uh, guys, instead, or we say instead, as if the letter A does not exist, instead of. And then uh, pronounce, pronouncing this word, theater, theater, th, th, theater. And then um, I want you to please remember what we said about EDs, okay? So this is shock. Right. If you say the the verb or the or the adjective ends with the ed, right? Then what what do we say? We don't say shocked. Why? Because uh, shocked is k, k and k is considered voiceless. Therefore, we say shocked as if this is a t sound. Shocked. This ed is pronounced as shocked. Take a look at this one, talk, same sound at the end, base form, talk, talk, k, k, and then we say talk. T. So this ED is pronounced as T. Keep that in mind, because the pronunciation is the same as um, for adverbs, I mean, for adjectives and also for uh, verbs, same rules, it doesn't change, okay? And well, so let's see, those who haven't participated, can you tell me what do you think is the answer on this one? Because this is the only one that they have different. Is it ING or is it ED, this part? What do you have? Send me on the chat your answer, please. Send me um, annoying or annoyed. Well, what's the answer according to your, I don't know, your um, ideas? Text on the chat, teacher. Annoying, says Jeffrey, okay. Annoying, Melissa. I'm sorry, Evelyn, right? Uh-huh. ING says Angie, okay. All right, we have three people saying annoying. Okay, Genaro, you too, okay. And I agree with you, yes. This case is annoying because this, uh, what? This this talking um, was annoying, okay? That, that specific condition was annoying 
and that is causing other reactions or feelings in other people. So if the movie or some, somebody is smoking, let's say, uh, the smoke, uh, what is annoying, because that gets me annoyed. If somebody's talking, you know, in, is interrupting me or it doesn't let me hear what I'm trying to hear at the movies, that is annoying, okay? So I am the one who's annoyed, okay? So thank you so much. Then I think we have the same answers. So I really thank you for that. I don't know if uh, you have any specific question about this specific text or you have doubts in any of these blanks. Please raise your hand. Are we okay? Maribel, no, no questions. Emma, no questions. Jenny, no questions. Are we okay? Hmm, okay. Teacher. Uh -huh. Some of those questions were in the in the quiz. The quiz. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. I'm I'm glad. <laughs> How was it? Easy. Teacher. Yes. In, in this case, is annoying. Quiz was annoying. Uh huh. Which was annoying. With e -N -E -N -E -N -G. ing form. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The story was hard to follow. I always found thrillers too confusing. I liked. And guys, remember when you're reading, the EDs are really crucial and they're really important. So if you want to go back and see uh, how to pronounce the EDs, do it. That's going to be something really useful. Okay, so then uh, we are going to move on, guys. And we have for today, we have a different, see, let me, let me erase and move forward. Okay, so today is about adjectives and also we have relative clauses, okay? Maybe uh, some of you already went over this, but it's, it's okay to discuss and to ask questions, okay, about this. Uh, before displaying, before showing relative clauses based on your understanding or based on what you understood on the videos or based on, based on what you have already heard or studied previously, what is a relative clause? What, let's say what's clause for you? What is a clause for you? Anybody? Open your mic. Raise your hand. What's a clause? Teacher, I don't know what that is. Uh, yeah, based on blah, 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 a clause for me is this and this and that. But just go ahead, please, and, and, and say something, okay? What's a clause? Mm -hmm. It's a... Uh... It's a sentence has a bear and subject. Okay, I like that that definition. It's a sentence. It's a sentence, and it has a verb and a subject. Subject and verb. Okay. Any other idea? Synonymous words. Synonym of words, okay. All right, I can see. Yeah, basically we have a clause, it's just a sentence, as you said it. Clause is a sentence, it can be a simple sentence. It has one uh, subject and one verb, okay? So basically clauses, they make sense, you know. Uh, we have two types of clauses, one that is the main clause and one that is the independent clause. Um, so the, the, the dependent clause, I'm sorry. So, so basically um, we have two type of clauses, the most common ones. And then uh, one that has meaning by itself and one that depends on the other one, okay? So, but today we're gonna focus only in one specific um, clause, which is relative clauses. And we need to know about something more. And this is relative pronouns. 
So how do we uh, know this is a relative clause? First, because it must, it's not an option, it must have a relative pronoun. So you have told me already, well, a clause is a sentence. We agree on that. And then what's a relative pronoun? Do you know what a relative pronoun is? Any example? What's a relative pronoun? Mm -hmm. What did you investigate? What did you read? Any relative pronoun? That you um, can tell me right now? Which? Maybe on, on the chat. Uh -huh. which? which, okay. Yes, I agree with you. Who? Who, exactly. What else? When? That. That, that. yes, exactly. Okay, you see? Where? That, which that is, is, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that and who? Okay. Which like that it. and who? I like it. Thank you so much. You guys know, I think you guys saw my presentation already. Let's see. Yes, in order for us to, to talk about this, well, let me move a relative um, clauses. We need a relative pronoun and take a look at this one. Well, first I want to say the following. Relative um clauses they add extra information or additional information about the noun by adding a relative what relative clause to a sentence so when you use a relative clause it's because you want to add more information about the noun okay so basically you are adding more details about the noun you are adding more I don't know, maybe uh, extra info about the noun. You want to be more specific, okay? That's, this is exactly when we use uh, relative um, clauses. Now, take a look at this one. Instead of using two sentences, for example, two sentences which are single sentences. Zara is eating roast chicken. First sentence. Second sentence is, it is her favorite meal. How can we, this is the challenge, how can we make one sentence using a relative clause? How can we make one sentence? Who, who wants to try? So we don't say, you know, two sentences, we only say one. How can we do it? Mm -hmm. Who wants to try? Maybe on the chat. Sarah is eating raw chicken. That is her favorite meal. Okay, do me a favor, send it on the chat. I want to read it from there. And thank you for reading it. I think somebody else wanted to wanted to um read, write, or participate. Send it on the chat. Maybe somebody's text. Jenny, what do you have? Sarah is eating raw chicken. That is her favorite meal. Okay, using that. Okay. Yeah. Do you want? to do only one sentence? Yes. Or without, uh, okay. Yes, yes. Gustavo says, Sara is eating roast chicken. That is her favorite meal, okay? And what about this one? Take a look at what I just sent you guys. Let me see. Um, Sara is eating her favorite favorite meal. Roast, oh, I like that, Jeffer, I like it. But then the purpose, Jeffer, is to use a relative pronoun. Relative pronouns are who, what, that, which. In this case, the best one, because which is for specific things, is uh, the which. following way. Look, we can combine two sentences to make one multi clause or complex, okay, sentence using a subordination, which is with a relative clause. Sara is eating a spaghetti, comma, which is her favorite meal. So by adding which, we delete the subject 
and we don't have two sentences, we only have one sentence. In this case, we are using the, the word which. So if we have one relative pronoun, this is considered relative clause. Basically the relative pronoun, which is combining the two simple sentences into one. That's the idea. And this is very common in English. This is very common. And it sounds more natural. It sounds, you know, um, clear. So you don't sound repetitive, okay? To avoid repeating words, then we want to use relative pronouns. Let's see, Zara is eating roast chicken. I think Angie, uh, the correct or spelling, you know, on your computer change some stuff. So let's, con let's continue. You wanna have more chances to, to practice with me. Let's see. Hmm. We need to add comma always. Um, well, no, 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 that's a good question. We're gonna see more examples, okay? And then, okay. then you see how this works. Look at, look at this one. A relative clause is connected to a main clause by a relative pronoun, okay? We've replaced the pronoun it. This is what I just said to you. Relative pronoun, which, okay, let's continue. We have more information. And then relative pronouns, Take a look at this one. These are the most common ones, guys. These are the most common ones. Whose, which denotes or which um, means possession, which specific things, who for people, that can be used for people and can be also used for, for things, okay, that. And whom, which is um, very formal, when you are referring to people as well. We're gonna see some examples. It only changes the structure when we use whom. Whom is really formal, referring to people. Now, once again, these are relative pronouns. Whose, which, who, that, whom. These are the most common ones. If a sentence, long sentence or complex sentence has a relative pronoun, any of these, then it's considered relative clause. Simple as that, okay? If you find any of this word into a, into a complex sentence, relative clause, that's it, okay? Let's not complicate it. Now, take a look at some examples. Okay, what is the relative uh, pronoun in this sentence? Let's see, uh, Jeffrey, what is the relative pronoun here? Is which teacher? Okay, thank you so much. Good. Emma, what is the relative pronoun in this one? Who? Who, exactly. It's adding more info about the, the noun. Miguel, let's continue. How about this one? Let's see, Angie, what is the relative pronoun here? Mm -hmm. Relative pronoun in the third one? Which? Yes. Okay, let's move on. Let's see, good job. Let's move on and let me see. Think there's, how about this one? Let's see, Marvel, what is the relative pronoun here? Whom? Whom, okay. Uh, how about this one? Let's see, uh, Gustavo. That. Okay, yes, there we go. Let's see. Which, who, whose, whom, and that. So those are relative pronouns. And therefore, these sentences are considered relative clauses, okay? Because they are joined, they are combined with a relative pronoun. Okay, now, before I move on, I want you to ask questions if you have any or create one example and then provide me with the two simple sentences and then share with me the a relative clause sentence, the complex one. So take uh, two minutes or three minutes, start brainstorming ideas and create one like these examples. Or if you have questions, you can ask at this moment too. I have a question. It's about whom. Whom is like when you are talking about someone, but in, I'm not really sure about something. Is for formal way or informal way? Very formal, Emma. That's very formal. Uh, being honest, whom is not that, let's say, uh, commonly used because whom is more for written or academic text, text or paragraph. 
but then home is really formal home i would say that that's more for formality and also the structure changes as you can see how this is being used the boy whom you met the whom and then we have a subject so it has to do with the structure and also with formality okay but then you can still use who and it will make sense, but then you will have to think about if the structure makes sense, okay? Because it changes. After who, you don't use a subject. As you can see, Miguel who loves at once, okay? Um, maybe the intention or the meaning. Try to create one with whom and you share it with me and then we'll see how, how it goes. Whenever you have your example, please let me know. I want to um, I want to check it. Maybe you can share it on the chat or you can open your mic and we can discuss it. Okay, I can see there's one already. I, I think who was one of the greatest scientific scientists, scientists, say Gustavo scientist. You're, you're missing something here. Einstein, who was one of the greatest scientists in the history, you're missing information here because you can say Einstein and then won the Nobel Prize. That's the same thing, right? But then who was one of the greatest scientists in, the his in history, then that is the extra info about the noun. Uh, so more you, oh, okay. Uh -huh, but then okay. you have to say the, the, the verb. I'm watching Avengers. Who is your favorite character? Mm, but that one sounds like um, a question, Melissa. I'm watching Avengers. Who, if, uh, what, like, that sounds like I'm watching Avengers, period. Who is your favorite character? Uh, and then, but the intention of using the relative clause is combining two simple sentences. Think about it. And then maybe we want to change the structure. Think about what are those two simple sentences that you are connecting by uh, the boy whom I met last year in the mall is talking, is taking classes with me. That's really good, Emma. Yeah, I like it. The, the boy whom I met last year in the mall is taking uh, classes with me. So the boy is taking classes with me. Sentence number one. I met uh, last. I met last year in the mall. The boy is the, the other. The other sent. Or I met a boy last year in the mall. That's it. Sentence number two. You mix them up, and then you have this one, Emma. That's really good. Today is the funeral, whom I talked about it. Um, maybe in this case, since funeral is, is one, um, let's see, it's not people, it's just a situation. Then we wanna change whom, because whom is like uh, for people. Today is the funeral, that, maybe that, but then, um, 
Are we really adding info about the noun? Uh, think about the purpose, guys, is to add more information about the noun. That is the purpose. It's not a sentence in which you can say who or, or whom, but then if you're not adding info about the noun, then we are, you know, not um, providing an example of relative clause. If we don't add info about the noun, more info, then we might have another structure, not, not, not this one. Whose, says Melissa. Whose, Melissa? It, that one is when something expresses possession or um, when something belongs to somebody. For example, look at this example on the screen. Richard, whose pen had run out, the pen belongs to Richard. Okay, is his possession, is his possession. So right after whose, maybe you want to write something different. For example, Melissa, whose, um, whose what car was blue, comma, and then uh, passed the exam with a 10. So I'm just adding, info for about Melissa because I'm saying that this belongs to Melissa, this car, okay? The, and that's basically what you wanna say. When you want to express possession, then whose is your best option? Think about one, maybe you can, you can come up with one. The street where my parents live is, the street where my parents live is very quiet. The street is very quiet. I like this one. The street where my parents live is very quiet. I like this one. You're using where, right? The street uh, is very quiet. My parents live in the street. Uh huh. Do you have two sentences that you can combine into one, Evelyn? I like it. Okay. So the purpose is to have two simple sentences into one. Um, I have more examples, but I still want you to give me your examples. Uh -huh. I want to leave the last 10 minutes to go over the some uh, a topic that we left, that I left pending. My brother who liked to summer was picked for, for select college, uh, select. It's like the, uh, what do you mean with select college? With the, um, I don't know, sport team or um, I don't know, the team from the college to the university. But then I, I see your point and that one makes sense. Just at the last part and we need to double check. There are good students who of them will be the, um, Hmm. They are good students. Who of them will be the best? I think. Um, Marvel, and this is the question. Are you really adding information about the students? The purpose is to add more information about the noun. That is relative uh, clause. When you add information about the noun, because what you are writing to me, Marvel, makes sense because it does. But then are we really using a relative pronoun? They are good students. It sounds like uh, I'm just giving you a statement and asking a question. They are good students. Uh, who of them will be the best? Or like which of them will be the best? As if you are asking a question. So maybe we want to double check this. Let me give you some other examples uh, where this is used and then you can still uh, look at this one. We have another here. This is a cooked pizza, which, uh -huh, which is my favorite food. I like this one. Because exactly Evelyn, because you're adding information about the noun. You're saying that pizza is your favorite food. That's a relative pronoun. That's, that's a good one. <clears throat> Let's see. Where in these sentences are the relative clauses placed? How do you know? Let me see, this one, this one, this one. We have three, four. 
So number one, Angie, what do you what do you say? Number one? Which? Okay. And we have, can you read the entire sentence, please? Read it. The class were well behaved on the school on the school trip, which made their teacher pro. Okay, so this behavior from the class made the teacher proud. So we're adding info about the reason as why the teacher feel proud of that class. Okay, and what about uh, the next one? Let's listen to, let's see, uh, maybe Hosman or Daniel Palacios or Daniel Edgardo, yeah. Number two. Okay, number two mm -hmm. for me is who? Read the sentence, please. William, who was wearing his favorite shirt, was going to the school disco. Thank you so much. Let me let me show you guys. Thank you uh, for reading, Daniel. William, and after William, we can say William, boom, until here. William was going to the school disco. We understand that, right? Clear. William is going to the school disco. And we understand what the meaning is. And then if we want to add more information about the noun, we can use the relative pronoun, who was wearing uh, his favorite shirt. Basically, that is the extra info. Now, I can say William was wearing his favorite shirt. William was wearing his favorite shirt. And I can say William was going to the disco. Now, I don't have two sentences. I have only one. William, who was wearing his favorite shirt, was going to the disco. That's the way it works. Uh, Jeffrey. Yes, Jeffrey. And then what questions or what ideas do you have? Yeah. Teacher, I have a question. Huh? This part, this topic is like in Spanish, juxtaposición. Ah, it's, it's more like subordinación, juxtaposición. Uh, coordinating, let me see. That's a good question. We have coordinating and subordinating. So this is coordinating. You could coordinating as juxtaposición, porque in English it's a coordinating conjunction, son conjunciones. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's sure. a good. Sorry, sorry. Uh -huh. Tell me, that's interesting. No, I have another question. And if and this is about who and whom, how do you know when you use who and whom with the structure of sentence? Okay, I want to um, give you an, maybe I need to go back on this so I can illustrate this better. But that is a really good question. I said already that whom is more for formality, right? It expresses more formality, but then the structure changes. Okay, now let's take a look at the examples here. Let me go back because that is a real, look at this one. Uh, so, Miguel, who loves to play football? As you can see here, we have, uh, after who, we only have one verb. We're adding, just info about the, the noun. But then when you take a look at the next example, which says whom, the boy, whom, is like more a quien in Spanish, a quien. It's not quien. It sounds like more a quien, whom. It's like when you say to whom, okay? It's like um, the boy whom you met if I say who you met, it still makes sense. It still makes sense. But then I, when you want to sound like more referring to someone in a specific, like addressing someone in a specific and more formality, whom becomes the best choice. So if you say the boy who you met last week is coming to visit later, sounds okay. But then whom is more like formal and it's addressing you know, somebody in a specific, and then the structure changes. Um, okay, so you cannot say the boy, the boy met last week, it won't make sense. You need to have one object or subject who is receiving the action, okay? 
on the on the contrary who doesn't require this so to be to be or to conclude on this topic i would say one formality two structure okay and three the intention you have okay and based on those three aspects you can start creating you know your own sentences let me also provide you with the example I saw Emma shared, which was an example I liked. She said, let me, let me go back. She said, I don't remember exactly, uh, the boy who I met last year in the mall is taking classes with me. If we pay close attention to this sentence that Emma sent, we have two sentences. <clears throat> the boy is taking classes with me. <clears throat> I met a boy last year in the mall. So this is the relative. Jeffer, yes. Teacher, I had a theory about this. Without the, the, these two examples, for example, I was thinking, we can can you say me if I am, mm -hmm. uh, for example, in first sentence, uh, who is used because before is a comma and you are how do you say dividing 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 the sentence in two sentences but in the case of whom mm -hmm. is only one sentence and i was thinking in spanish whom is like you said a quien uh -huh. Uh -huh. and who is all okay. like el cual or, uh -huh, or quien uh -huh. Uh -huh. let me tell you that your um opinion in the translation in spanish you agree i mean i agree with you on that because when you translate things into spanish that would be the best way to say it now you really you really what uh you really see details because the comma yeah the comma plays an important role in this case it's not that we have two sentences because a sentence let me tell you jeff that sentence is uh divided by period not by commas commas only um what well, they just provide let's see more info about anything in uh, within one sentence so we cannot say that in the first in the miguel is two sentences because it's only one the thing is that we have a complex sentence it's not a simple sentence it has two sentences into one so the two of these examples are considered complex sentences because it, it has more than one sentence two are one sentence two are one sentence it's not two sentences but then um, it's just that they're using one relative pronoun to combine the two simple into one complex sentence. Okay, um, we're gonna keep trying. I wanna try to give you more details, more examples about who and whose, because um, who and whom, I'm sorry, because I understand this uh, tend to be sometimes confusing, especially if, if um, maybe the first time that we're looking at it, or maybe if the context doesn't help. And let me tell you something, when, when you take a standardized test, uh, whom and who become a pain in the neck, let's say. Um, yeah, because they're kind of very similar, but then you pay attention to the structure, then you identify, oh, no, in this case, the best choice is whom because of this structure or because of this intention. So, well, let's practice and then we'll see how it goes. I know you're going to have this clearer, you know, at the end of this session, okay? So let's, let's continue. And maybe for tomorrow, you can bring some other examples and we can talk about it, okay? Uh, let's move on because I want to um, discuss some other details from this. Uh -huh. <clears throat> well, we have the relative clause here. Teacher. Uh -huh. I, I have one in the chat. Oh, you have one question? No, uh, one sentence. This is the card which I adopt. <laughs> you adopted a cat? This is no, the, the book. The book is written by my friend's instance. Oh, it's not. Oh, let me see. Oh, 
the book, the book, the book, the book. You send it already? I don't see it. I don't see the book, the book, the book. I don't see. Maybe I don't see it. Hmm. Oh, the book which was written by my friend is interesting. Yes. Yes, that's a good one. So you can say the book, the book is, is interesting. You can still add a comma after a friend. The book is interesting. The book mm -hmm. was written by my friend. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about, what we're discussing. Guys, uh, tomorrow we're going to retake this topic, okay, about relative uh, clauses. I know it's just maybe a new topic, but then I know we are going to understand this better as, as uh, we practice on more ex examples. Um, so I'm going to stop here because I want to go back and complete one activity that was uh, pending. So, but before I do that, I want to know, I want you to tell me what have you understood so far about relative clauses? Like I need to hear at least two opinions, confusing, more or less. This is what I have understood. So please talk with me. No, no comments. Okay, then we have exactly uh, tomorrow we're gonna go over this. Then we have exactly like uh, ten minutes or less to discuss about this activity that I know you saw it on on the platform, and I want to know how you have solved it. And this is the one. Take a look at this. This one. Did you guys uh, categorize these synonyms into these four categories? Awful, wonderful, stupid, and strange. Did you do that or not? Yes. You did it, okay. We have one person who did it. And what about the other ones? Did you do it? Because I want you to share it with me to, to check on the answers. So I can see only one person did it. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you exactly four minutes, one minute per category for you to do it. And then you share it with me, okay? Start working on this on your notebook. Write awful, wonderful, stupid, and strange, and then see which one goes under each category. Four minutes. When you finish, send me a message on the chat. If you have it already, it's okay. Thank you for doing it, and let's wait for the other ones. I can see maybe the shadows. Mm -hmm, Stephanie. Um, well, we just made a, a short uh, parenthesis on this because we are solving this uh, synonyms chart, Stephanie. But then tomorrow we are going to study, uh, we're going to retake the relative clauses for tomorrow but I do invite you to look for your own examples and relative clauses, and then you can share tomorrow what you have found. But as of now, I will give you like two more minutes for you to complete this chart.
So when you have it ready, please let me know. Nice. Okay, have you finished? Yes. Okay, great. Let's share then. Let's share this because the time is almost over. Please uh, share with me. Let's see, what do you have guys under awful? What do you uh, What are synonyms of awful? What are synonyms? Disgusting. So disgusting, okay, I agree with you. What else do you have under awful? Terrible. Horrible. Horrible. Dreadful. Terrible, horrible, and dreadful. Okay. Horrible. Yeah. Horrible, terrible. Dreadful. Dreadful, and this. Terrible. Disgusting. disgusting. Awesome, because. I like it. We have the same answers. Good. How, what about on wonderful? What do you have? Fabulous. Fabulous. Fantastic. 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 Marvelous. 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 Outstanding. Outstanding. Exactly. Outstanding. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. What about stupid? Dumb. Dumb. Ridiculous. Uh -huh. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Silly. 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 Absurd. 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 Yeah. Okay, good. And how what about strange? You know, weird, you know, bizarre, weird, odd, so you know, you know, so. Simple as that. Thank you so much. Okay, I can see you guys have it ready. If you didn't complete this task, please do it, okay? Because it's important that you guys um, complete your, uh, I mean, this exercise. And besides, because whenever you are speaking English, you need to know more words. So you, you don't want to say, that's a strange. Use that. That's bizarre. That's weird. That's unusual. So you want to speak like, wow, this guy knows a lot. You don't say, oh, that's wonderful. That's fantastic. Fabulous. Outstanding. So you see, a synonyms is a way to sound more what, um, maybe as if you know a lot. Uh, interesting, you know, you're an interesting person, and so on and so forth. Well, guys, um, thank you so much. If you don't, if you don't uh, have it completed, please do it. Complete this chart, and uh, I do invite you to start writing sentences with these adjectives, because the mission is to use them, and <clears throat> if you don't use them, you might not remember them, or you might forget them, okay? So, Tomorrow, we're going to retake the relative clauses. Thank you so much for connecting, guys. Do you have any questions as of now? No? All right, thank Thanks you sir. so much. Yes? Sorry, what is the homework for today? Sorry, for tomorrow. Homework is just look for more uh, words or example with relative clauses, that's it. And then make sure you complete, you know, the platform exercises because that is mandatory okay okay all right guys take Thank care you. see you tomorrow bye bye see you, see you tomorrow see you tomorrow bye, -bye. see you tomorrow bye, -bye.